Let me try to make a new movie since previous movie had been removed by YouTube. So this project I've been working on for the last half year. It's a epoxy granite vertical CNC mill. The base of the machine and the column are made from epoxy granite. They are about 350 kilo each. So total weight of the castings is 700 kilos, which should be a pretty nice solid base for the machine. The x-axis slide is made from steel. It's steel sheet, steel plate work, which after welded had been heat treated and then all the, the important surfaces had been machined on a really big milling machine. On that there is a, the table, which first is an aluminium subplate where the, the weights are connected to and on top of that there is a steel T-slot table. The table is um, 300 millimeters in the Y-axis and 600 millimeter in the X-axis which is also the work area so the mill can reach each corner of the table. Um, yeah, the head. The head is also made from steel. It's made in two parts. You have the, the head which is connected to the column it's uh, fixed and filled with epoxy and then the, the nose where the spindle is in it's it's loose and it can be trimmed and after trim it will be filled with epoxy to make it one solid piece um, the head has a pneumatic counterweight there are two chains that goes on over the column and on go down on the back side on the back side there is a big pneumatic air cylinder connected to this air tank. This air tank is about 10 times bigger than the capacity of the cylinder itself. So every time the cylinder gets in or out the pressure rise isn't that, isn't, isn't that high. So the force of the counterweight is more or less always the same. On the other side of the machine there is a oil pump for the lubrication of the way of the ways and the ball screws. There are three pneumatic valves: one for the chip blow off of the tool setter, one to change tools, and the other one will be for the tool changer arm to come in and out. Then there are two air regulators. It's still a little bit messy here. One regulator that regulates the pressure for the cylinders and the other one is um, keeping the pneumatic counterweight on pressure. So if there ever will be a leak in the cylinder or somewhere else, the air compressor will just refill it so the counterweight doesn't get lost. Um, about the milling head, there is a BT30 spindle. which has been driven by two belts by this huge uh, 3.7 kilowatt servo motor maybe a little bit big but I don't care better have a little bit more power the servo itself can run up to 12,000 rpm but the spindle itself is just limited to 6,000 because of the bearings so for, for now I'm just gonna use it at 6,000 rpm and maybe later I want to try to change the bearings and see if I can use it at 12,000 RPM. On top of the spindle there's a three-stage air cylinder to press in the drawbar so I can load and unload tools. Yeah, then there is this big cable chain which just stops a little bit underneath the ceiling. A little bit of luck on my side, didn't really thought about it. On the table there is this tool center which will probably always stay just there in the corner because there is enough space for me on the table to put on two vices. It's just uh, I made it screwable so I can just disconnect if I need all the space on the table and the wires are just running through the table so 
no wires or I don't need a wireless tool setter like the big machines have. Then this will be the electronic cabinet. It's not yet finished, but the main parts of, of, of the thing are working. On the left side there is a big driver for the spindle motor. Then there are three drivers for the axis. Two power supplies, one for the CNC controller and one for the uh, pneumatic valves and the brake of the C-axis servo. Some circuit breakers, relays and the six axis CNC controller from adding CNC with a expansion module so I have more in and outputs for the tool changer I want to build later on. And this will be more or less the mock-up version of the control panel. It's a 17 inch touchscreen running Windows and then running adding CNC. There's a keyboard because I don't really like to type on a uh, screen display, the jog hand wheel, start button, pause button, uh, select selection of the axis, selection of the division of the axis, feed override and spindle override. Now the machine is running at max speed which is about 15 meters per minute. For the, the guides and the ball screws, I use Hibin. On the y-axis, it's uh, 30 millimeters guide ways. For x-axis and C, it's only 25. The ball screws also Hibin, 20 on the x-axis and 20 on the y. And on the c-axis, there's a 25 uh, millimeter spindle. On each axis I use two nuts, one that's completely fixed and the other one is pushed out by, by a couple of springs to compensate any backlash but still make it possible for the second nut to move a little bit to compensate for the inaccuracy of the ball screw since it's only a C7 spindle. Those spindles are driven by uh, servos from Delta. They really look like steppers but trust me they are real servos. They are 750 watt each. And on the C axis there is the same, but this one has a brake. So if the power, fa fa the power goes off and the counterweight doesn't work, then the, the brake will keep the head in the air. Since that's about 130 kilos of steel and motor and spindle. You don't want to have a drop down. Uh, yeah, let me turn on the spindle. It, the, the power is off right now because the fans are a little bit noisy. There is one fan inside of the servo itself to keep the servo cooled. It runs always. So when you run low RPMs, the spindle is just get cooled. Um, yeah, let's try turn it on. Right now it's running 1000 RPM. Let's try a little bit lower. This is 500 RPM. With a lot of a lot of torque, so that should be good. Uh, and let's see what it does on 6,000. The next real big thing I want to do is uh, trim the column and trim the head and once that's done I can fill those gaps 
that are between the column and the base with epoxy so the those two parts will be fixed together there is a release agent on it so if I ever need to take the machine apart again or alignment didn't really went well I can always break the two parts loose and try again same for the head this gap in between will be filled to make it one part right now there are uh, here you can see it better gub screws to lift the column to make alignment and then once it's filled with epoxy it should be one solid part so that's quite it for now I hope you guys like the build and I think there's still yet more to come